Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch The Flash, Season 4, Episode 15, to see how accurate all the signs and technology in this TV show really are. Super speed. What? Is this what it looks like when you run? Well, more or less. That is a really cool way of showing how speed is relative. The further an observer is from a high velocity object, the slower that object appears to be moving. And like a really easy example of this is when you see an airplane just flying across the horizon. It appears like to you as the observer because you're so far from the plane that it's moving slow. But if you are up close and right next to it, that plane would zoom right past you. On the flip side, if you are in a high velocity object with like a car driving really, really fast, if you see people on the sidewalk, you only see them in like one frame. Because of how quickly you're moving, you don't see their entire motion unless they're moving at the same speed you are. So a car going at like 50 miles an hour and there's a person walking at 5 miles an hour, you're only going to see that person for like, like when they're like walking in like midair, but you're not going to see them complete a whole two steps. Right now, Barry is moving so fast that he actually appears invisible to everyone around him. And from the principles that we just talked about, this would make sense because of how close he is to everybody. Like, it's like if you're right next to the plane. The plane's going so fast, if you blink, you will miss it. To bring Cisco up to speed... Okay, I mean, to bring Cisco up to the Flash's velocity so that you, they can bring him up to speed on the situation, he actually has to slow down and then match Cisco's speed, which is zero like meters per second because he's at rest, and then the Flash has to speed back up to like the, the, that new dimension of like speed or whatever, like whatever he called it. If the Flash didn't slow down and then like grab Cisco and speed back up, he would actually kill him because like, he's moving at an insanely fast speed while Cisco is just essentially frozen compared to him. So if his hand was to reach out and grab Cisco, it would actually be vibrating at such an intense rate, he would just kill Cisco accidentally. Another way to imagine that is, like, if you have a friend who's on, like, a motorcycle and they're just, like, going right past you on a street, for them to, like, grab onto you and, like, get you on the back of the bike, they have to really slow down to match your speed, which is normally zero because you're just standing there waiting for your friend, and then you get on their back and then you go down on the motorcycle, right? But if the guy on the motorcycle is just going off at like 20 miles an hour and he reaches out to like grab his friend on the side of the street, you're probably gonna break your wrist <laughs> because the speed difference is just so much that that momentum that the guy on the bike is carrying is all being transferred to the guy who's at rest. And that, that like, there's a huge energy differential, so that's why the Flash if he's not careful about it, he could actually instantly kill anyone and everybody while he's in this speed dimension. That, that looks like an experimental fission engine, deuterium isotopes, that would make this an inertial confinement cage to stop the radiation. But with enough pressure, the isotopes inside, they split, they produce heat, they produce light, it starts out blue, turns yellow, turns purple, and then it's game over. Just please tell me this. That part about nuclear... Fission is wrong. I don't know if you said fission or fusion. I'm pretty sure you just said fission though, and that's not correct. Like, uh, if the fuel cells in that, like, whatever, like that ball was, like, if the fuel is deuterium, then that's not nuclear fission. That's nuclear fusion. And for fusion, you can use deuterium or tritium, but you don't use those in a fission reaction. Nuclear fission is what the atom bomb was doing. Like you take a really big molecule like uh, plutonium or uranium and then you bombard it with like a really tiny molecule like helium or an alpha particle for example. And then what will happen is that big molecule will just break down into a bunch of little molecules. And as it breaks down it releases energy and it releases heat. And then you get a big explosion and that's the bomb. Nuclear fusion is the exact opposite of that process. You have a bunch of little things, they come together to form one big thing. If that really is an atom bomb, then that inertial containment unit is not going to do anything. I mean, it's going to like deteriorate at such an intense level. Like, it's going to be another one of those examples of when that bomb goes off, you're going to blink and you'll already be dead. Like, that, that container is not going to save anything. As far as the color goes, I've heard of blue and purple, but... I don't think that yellow is like, I mean, that might just be like 
the, the flame from like the actual like fire produced but i don't think yellow is an actual like color that's gonna occur from the um, internal reaction but i know blue and purple definitely are hey. i'm not used to going this long it's okay, it's okay. Damn legs. It's all right. Don't work like they once did. It's okay. Just... I'm not going to be able to finish this one, Flash. I don't know how all of these guys are able to talk to each other, like, in this, like, high-speed dimension. Because it doesn't, like, I don't know how the sound would actually travel, like, from their, like, vocal cords to the other person's ears within, like, as quickly as they're showing it. The speed of sound in air at room temperature is 343 meters per second, and I guarantee that all three of these flashes are moving much, much faster than that. So I'm not sure that they would be able to actually talk to each other, given the speed that they're traveling. If anything, what will probably happen is they'll see each other's lips moving up and down, but they're not gonna actually hear the words until a few seconds later. One example to show that is if an observer was to see like an explosion going off, like a bomb for example. When you see that bomb go off in the distance, you're going to first actually see like the fire and everything, and then you're going to hear the shockwave from the explosion. But you're not going to see it and hear it at the same time. And the reason that you're going to see it first is because the speed of light is much faster than the speed of sound. The reason I had to specify the speed of sound in air at room temperature is because sound is just vibrations through a medium. Like that can travel even through water or through like physical metal. Like if you're speaking into a microphone, then you're speaking like it's like vibrating a magnet over and like back and forth and that's what's actually gonna produce the sound through an amplifier. But in this case, the sound is moving through air. And if the sound was moving through water, then it would actually move much faster and it would travel much farther. I'm going to fix this to your forehead. What is that? It's the streamlined version of D.A. Cecile Horton's mental activity dampener. Nice upgrade. Thank you. But I thought this was uh, supposed to block out people's thoughts. Not anymore. Now, it allows you to hear them. This is no longer sci-fi, alien, like, insane technology. It's called Neuralink, and Elon Musk is actually working to develop this right now. Although not exactly like this, the concept is quite similar. The user would actually have to implant something into their brain, and then that would increase the bandwidth of their mind, and you would pretty much be logged in and connected to the internet 24-7. And since people communicate through the internet, if two people actually have this Neuralink inside of them, then you would be able to communicate without talking to each other. People today can already communicate without using verbal language. I mean, there's sign language and there's all ultra like gestures and things like that. But like with this technology specifically, you're going to be communicating with another person using just your brain. I love superhero movies and TV shows and everything that goes into like the really deep like parts of all these characters because there's so much to them. And with this show especially, I, I think it was great. Like, I have watched the first few seasons of The Flash, but after I caught up, I just didn't, like, watch the rest of it. So, I don't know what some of these characters are, but in terms of, like, the concepts that we saw, they were pretty good. Now, I thought this was, like, really... I mean, obviously, we're watching it under the guise of, like, a sci-fi TV show. So, like, we're kind of going into it, like, expecting it to not be exactly real life. Like, we're not watching Arrow, right? Which... Even in Arrow, there were some, like, questionable things going on, but I like Arrow a lot, actually. I mean, th these shows are just so cool, I really like them, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed watching th th this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.